Hey everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Today we're here in Dad's garage to talk about 2020 and I know there's not too many details we want to cover from last year. What we want to talk about is pickup truck sales. You know what, 2020 was tough for all the automakers, but pickup truck sales were actually kind of a lone bright spot last year and we want to tell you guys exactly what happened. So in this video, we're going to start by covering US truck sales and then we're going to get to Canadian truck sales and we'll actually talk about some of the differences between the countries, which is pretty interesting, so stay tuned. So right off the top, let's talk about total vehicle sales North America wide, down 20% over the previous year. Now, the interesting thing is though that they're not even across all the different makes. In other words, and types. So some really, really cratered. Yeah. Pickup trucks on the other hand, yeah, they're down, but they're not down that average 20%. In actual fact, there's quite a few that in some ways they gained. Yeah, that's definitely totally true. Some trucks really lost a lot, some trucks gained. We're gonna start with mid-sized trucks in the United States, and there's a few big winners here. So uh, coming in at number seven, which means the truck that sold the least last year is the GMC Canyon. And you know what, GMCs, uh, as compared to Canada and the States, they never sell that well as compared to their Chevrolet counterparts. The Canyon was down a full 23% in 2020. Uh, that's 25,000 units, just a little bit over. But you know what, GM is working on a uh, redesign for its midsizers, so we'll see what happens with the Canyon in the near future. Yeah, some of these numbers are going to be kind of obvious because when you look at the age of certain product, well, and then the overall decline, Got it. Mm -hmm. Let's look at some of the ones that are a little weirder. Now coming in at number six is the Honda Ridgeline. Now the Ridgeline is only down three and a half percent, so that's really not all that much. And that's always been true about the Ridgeline. It doesn't shoot up or down in sales every year. It has this consistent consumer base and it just kind of chugs along. And uh, for reference, it did 32,168 units last year. Now coming in at number five is the Nissan Frontier. And this is an interesting one. Don't forget for 2020, Nissan put a brand new powertrain into the truck, a new V6, a new nine speed automatic, but still the old frame and body. This was kind of, you know, their play at updating the truck without revealing the full update and it seems like it did not work out. In 2020, Frontier sales were down 49%. But they took a beating. Yeah, but you know, the big thing with that, Steve, is that they just didn't promote it. Yeah, you never I'll heard I bet you there's it. a lot of people that are looking at this right now going, they did what? They put in a new engine? They did not spend any money promoting that truck. Yeah, it was a strange move at the time, and it definitely seemed like plan B, maybe even plan C, because the new truck wasn't ready. Um, but all that to say, there is a new Frontier coming. I think it's going to be a 2023 model. Could be a 2022. We don't have actual well, I would yet. hope. I would hope it's a 22. Yeah, but we're going to have to wait and see. So stay tuned right here on this channel because the second we get news about new Frontier, you guys will get it. Coming in at number four is the Jeep Gladiator. And I think the folks at Jeep got to be pretty happy with these numbers. The Gladiator was up 94%. Now, to be fair, we have to point out that in 2019, the truck didn't hit the market until about April. So there's a couple extra months here we're comparing in 20 as compared to 19, but still, that's a huge gain. And the Gladiator did 77,542 units. Uh, yeah, I think that's got to be uh, pretty good news for Jeep. Absolutely. And just to throw in another number there, their sales in Canada are up 130% year over year. Same caveats, but... Very, very popular. Yeah. Now, coming in at number three, we have the Chevrolet Colorado. And to give you a sense for how popular the Colorado has been, it's down 21%, but it's still the third best selling truck. Uh, Colorado did 96,238 units last year, but just like the Canyon, it's due for an update. So, hopefully, within the next year, we see an all new midsizer from GM. And that should, uh, you know, boost their sales. And I think what we're going to see here in a minute is that Rangers stole some of their sales. Yeah, let's roll right into it. Number two is the Ford Ranger. And it's actually up 13.3%, good for 101,486 units. The fact that it was reintroduced and it shot right up to number two in the segment, well, just like Jeep, Ford's got to be happy with that. 
Ranger sales in Canada up 64%. We have big numbers. And finally, we arrive at number one. You guys already know what it is. The Toyota Tacoma. The Tacoma owns the midsize segment. It's undeniable. Uh, it was actually down 4.6% last year. However, that was still enough to sell 238,000 units. So the Tacoma outsold the Ranger, the next closest truck, by double. People love their Tacomas in North America, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So let's take a look at the big number, the full-size market. And let's also remember that the manufacturers publish full-size as half-ton, three-quarter, and one-ton, all one number. Yeah, so that's what we're going to cover right now. And there's actually two manufacturers, right, that don't make HDs, Nissan and Toyota. And they're both at the bottom of the list, expectedly. So Nissan comes in at number six and it is actually down 16.1%. And just like the Frontier, they did update the Titan in 20. Uh, you know, it wasn't a huge update, a little tiny power boost, some exterior stuff, but sadly for Nissan, it seems like the update just didn't matter. No one's buying Titans. And I, I, I have such a hard time with this because I don't think Titan's a bad truck. Mm -hmm. And right now you can still get it in the States. They've discontinued it in Canada and it's dying, I think, because of the lack of push, because there's no advertising, there's absolutely no promotion whatsoever. I don't know what they're thinking. This is a tough one. We talk about it a lot. Let us know what you guys think. If you own a Titan, we'd love to hear from you. Go in your comments and just let us know what you think of the uh, Nissan Titan and why it never took off. Coming in at number six is the other manufacturer that doesn't make HD trucks, that is Toyota. So the Tundra is actually only down 2.2%, so not a big fall. That's good for 109,000 units, which again, for the Tundra, actually doesn't seem all that bad. They're down a little bit, but they're not nearly down as far as, you know, industry norms. So I think for Toyota, it seems like a win. Same thing as kind of like the Ridgeline. The Tundra just stays flat. It keeps its market segment, doesn't grow or fall too much, but... I look at it as good news for them. It is, absolutely. And I always like to point out that these trucks come out of just one plant in San Antonio. That plant runs at 100%. So they sell every single truck they build. It's not like they got a bunch of them sitting around and they're not getting sold. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways, they kind of peg that as their capacity. And until such time as they decide to build another plant, we'll see if the numbers go up. And like a lot of trucks on the list, new Tundra coming pretty soon. Hopefully we see it this year and it'll be a 2022 model. So uh, that could be a big bump in sales for them too. We gotta wait and see though. And now we get into the American manufacturers and there's a couple interesting things at play here. But first we're gonna cover these by pickup truck nameplate. So at number four, we have to talk GMC Sierra. So the Sierra was actually up 4.4% in 2020 really impressive numbers from General Motors. That's good for 252,000 units. And uh, yeah, GM, out of all of these makers, actually is the one brand that posted numbers that went up in 2020. And you know, we've complained about some things on GM trucks like the interiors, but it seems like customers out there don't care too much and they're buying up these trucks. It's interesting to see that in a market like this, with aggressive sales, and promotions and discounts, there's been some guys changing up their brands. And to keep rolling with GM, at number three, we have the Chevrolet Silverado, which is up 3.2%, good for 594,000 units. So Silverado and Sierra are both up. And now here's where it gets tricky, Dad. Silverado and Sierra are number three and four. But if you combine their sales, General Motors sold the most full-size trucks in the US last year. That is a fact. When you combine these two nameplates, I know Ford doesn't like us to combine these two, but I think you have to, right? No, I don't know. I've been hearing this argument for the last 25 years. Every year we do this well if you put them together, but honestly, it comes down to whatever the nameplate is. That's the way I look at it. So if F-150 sells X, Silverado sells X, who sold the most? I still think that's the way it should be. Fair enough. Well then we'll continue on because this video we are looking at nameplates and at number two we have Ram pickup trucks. So Ram is actually down 11% in 2020 but they still held on to that number two spot and they moved 624,000 pickup trucks last year. Ram 
just recently overtook GM to get up into that second spot above Silverado. They've been banging on that door for 10 years, and good for them for getting there. And now at number one, the best-selling full-size truck in North America since forever, since way before I was born, of course, is the Ford F-Series. So the F-Series sold 787,000 units in 2020, but that was actually down 12.2% in the U.S. So even Ford was not immune from the downturn. They took a pretty big hit, but they're still up there at number one. And they have to be excited because they just launched that 2021 F-150, fully redesigned. We have a full review here on the channel. It's a pretty great truck with a lot of good features. I don't think Ford has anything to worry about just yet. No, they're definitely still the big dog in Canada. 55 years straight as the number one selling truck. Uh, however, down 14.12% mm -hmm. in Canada, which is fairly typical. But like I said to you, it ain't the 20% that some sedans are down. All right, so let's talk about Canadian sales, in particular midsize, and this is where the weird stuff happens. In one way, in another way, Canadians always have bought more midsize trucks than Americans. An American guy standing there going, midsize, full size, he goes, ah, hell with it, full size. Canadians, definitely more midsize. Steve? So there's definitely some interesting things here. First, we have to mention Frontier. It sold the least units, just like in the States. It was actually down 57% in Canada, so Frontier totally took a dump. Uh, Colorado was also down 18% in Canada. That was the next biggest hit. And then everyone else actually is up. The Jeep Gladiator up 130%. The GMC Canyon up 2.9%. The Ford Ranger up 64%. And I should mention now that the actual lineup of sales is the same Canada to the States. Tacoma number one, Ranger number two, Colorado number three. But now we have to say this. At number one is the Tacoma in Canada is up 14%. And 2020 was the best year of Tacoma sales in Canada ever. So like Dad just said, Canadians kept on snatching up those mid-size pickup trucks. So let's take a look at full-size trucks in Canada. And frankly, they're a little closer in terms of how they mirror what's been happening in the states. Well, yeah, and like Dad said, you know, we buy more mid-sizers, less full-sizers. All of the full-size pickup truck brands in Canada were down in 2020, unlike in the states where, you know, GM was actually up. So uh, we actually have Titan coming in at the bottom of the list again. It's down no surprise. 56%, and that's why Nissan dumped the Titan from the Canadian market. Canadians really don't like buying Nissan Titans. Next up, we have the Toyota Tundra. Uh, same thing. The two Japanese automakers are right there at the bottom of the list. And the Tundra is relatively flat in Canada. Moving up, same thing as the States. Then you have Silverado Sierra. But here's an interesting difference. And Dad and I talk about this a lot. In the States, it's about 80% Silverado sales and 20% Sierra sales makes up that whole pie of General Motors. In Canada, it's 50-50. We sold 51,000 Sierras and 52,000 Silverados. So it's an interesting difference. Canadians like GMC more than Americans. And maybe it's just that Americans like Chevrolet more than us. They like GMC, but there's also one key, key difference. There are no standalone Chevy dealers in Canada, mm. whereas there are in the States. So here they're always with a couple of the other GM brands thrown together. So, and you never have two of those in the same town, hmm. particularly the smaller towns. So you either got a GMC guy or you got a Chevy guy. So in some ways you end up buying whoever's closest to you. Yeah, interesting differences, no doubt. Uh, but Sierra and Silverado are there at number four and number three, but they're both down. Sierra's down 5.3%, Silverado's down 1.3%. Then at number two, we have Ram, once again, just like the States, but Ram is actually down 14% in Canada, pretty big hit. And at number one, like Dad said, for 54 years now, has been the Ford F-Series. But again, in Canada, down 11%. So everybody took these big hits in the Canadian full-size pickup truck market. It'll be very interesting to watch 2021 now and see if they rebound. And i got to correct Steve, it's 55 years. Ugh. Ford, please don't call me. I, I cheated them a year. Well, folks, I think that's it for this one. Uh, 2020 was a crazy year and it was certainly interesting in pickup truck sales. I think the story of this whole pandemic, right, there's been some big winners and big losers and that's definitely been the case in automotive and I can't wait to see what happens this year. Just from doing this video we've been talking now, it seems like there's a lot of new stuff coming and I can't wait to show you guys everything. 
So, uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Go below, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of all the 2020 truck sales. Did you buy a truck last year? Please tell us about it. As always, I did. That's true. And if you haven't seen his truck yet, go check out that video right now on the channel. Leave us that comment. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the join button to become a member of the Trucking channel, and then come right back here to see what we're testing next. See ya. See you guys.